Okay, so another plating problem, which means... Now, spoiler alert, this is going to be the first problem where we have a bit of a stumble using the It's Funny formula. It's still going to work, just a little bit unusually in this case. So they tell us we run a current, and they don't tell us how much. And they don't tell us how long it's running, but they tell us it plates out 15 grams of aluminum. And then they're going to do something with magnesium, which we'll worry about in a minute. For now, let's just say, if we plate 15 grams of aluminum, how much can we figure out from there? Well, aluminum is a plus 3 ion, so it's electron-hungry. It takes 3 electrons to reduce an aluminum atom. Okay, and we know that our number of moles of aluminum would be its mass, 15, divided by the molar mass for aluminum, which is 2698. 15 divided by 2698, we get 0 0.55597 moles of aluminum. According to our reaction, however much aluminum you make, you'll need three times that many electrons. So if we have this much aluminum, we'll need three times that much electrons. 1.6679 moles of electrons. So that's how much they use to plate 15 grams of aluminum. And this is where this question gets a little bit unusual. We have our moles of electrons. Now, if we go back to our formula here, we can't solve this the way we ordinarily do because we don't have current and we don't have time. So we end up with this. A current I don't know multiplied by a time I don't know either equals our trusty Faraday constant, 96,500, multiplied by 1.6679 moles of electrons. Now, pause. At this point they say we take that exact same amount of current and that exact same amount of time and we're going to apply them to some magnesium now and see how much magnesium we can make. Well if you look at this, the two sides of this have to remain equal always so if we did this and we had this many electrons, if the current stays exactly the same and the time stays exactly the same and Faraday's constant is called a constant because it always stays the same, I guess that means this can't change either. So for the magnesium case, because we have the same current and the same time and the same Faraday constant, they're saying we also have the same number of electrons. So down here on our magnesium side, we can say our number of moles of electrons is still 1.6679. That's the point of having current and time. It's to give you moles of electrons. So if those don't change, the electrons won't either. So if we have that, what are we doing when we plate magnesium? Magnesium's charge is 2 plus when it's ionized. So this will be a 2 to 1 reaction. That means however many electrons you've got, you'll only get half that much magnesium. Divide this number by 2, and we get that our number of moles for magnesium is divided by 2 equals 0 0.83395 moles of mg. Now, the mass of magnesium is number of moles times molar mass. So it's 0.83395 times the molar mass of magnesium is 24.31. And that gives us 20.3 grams. Little weird, not too bad. OK, this next one is a comparison thing. Which ions will need the largest number of coulombs, as in the largest amount of electrons? Same idea. 
you can either measure it by how many electrons or by how much charge do they have, but either way, which will need the largest amount of electrons to plate out 200 grams of metal? So we have sodium, copper, silver, and calcium. And for all of these, I'm going to start a separate column, and we'll do them kind of assembly line style. We're saying we have 200 grams of sodium and copper and silver, 200 grams, and calcium, 200 grams. Now, those are the masses, of course. The number of moles for each of these is mass divided by molar mass. So I'm going to do these one after the other. The masses are all 200 grams, but the molar masses are different. For sodium, this is going to be 200 divided by 22.99 is the molar mass for sodium. So there I get 8.6994. Four moles. For copper, it's 200 divided by 6355, is it? Yeah. 3.1471 moles of copper. For silver, it's 200 divided by 10787. That's 1.8541. moles of silver, and for calcium it would be 200 divided by 40.08, which is just under 5, 4.99, oh, zero, zero. Okay, so that's the moles of every one of these. Now, what we're actually counting is the number of moles of electrons, and for that we need to think about the reactions that are going on here. I hope I can write these small but legibly. For sodium, its ions only have a plus one charge, so the reaction here would be sodium plus an electron produces sodium metal. The point is, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. However much sodium you're making, you'll need exactly that many electrons. So our number of moles of electrons for the sodium will be 8.6994. That's the bottom line for sodium, how many electrons you will require. For copper, and they said it's copper 2, always seems to be copper 2 in this unit, the ratio is 2 to 1. For every copper you're making, you need twice that many electrons. So 3.1471 times 2 gives us 6.2942, if I'm not mistaken, moles of electrons. For silver, well, silver's got a single charge, just like sodium did. So, however much silver you're making, exactly the same number of electrons. 1.8541. And for calcium, its charges are plus 2 on the ions. So you need 2 electrons per ion. So however much calcium you're producing, you'll need twice that many electrons. So 4.99 times 2 is 9.98. Uh, 9.98 .98 moles of electrons. So which, uh, which one will require the most? The calcium will. Runner-up is sodium, copper is second last, and silver will require the least.